Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Salty Popcorn. What's up? Hello, everybody. That's my favorite, one of my favorite movies. What? Oh, Gone Girl. Okay, yeah. So <laughs> this week, spoiler warning before everyone, uh, you know, listens in, listens in deeply into our conversation. Spoiler warning. Um, this is a 2014 movie by made by Dave Fincher, which is an American psychological thriller um, that features Ben Affleck, uh, Rosamund Pike, uh, Tyler Perry, and Neil Patrick Harris. And it's essentially about uh, a guy that appears to have killed his wife. And there's a bunch of clues that, damning clues, that says that he, uh, that he did it. But however, it's all been one big setup by his very smart wife. So um, Very smart yeah. and psychopath. And psychopath, and they're both writers, you know. Too so smart. So maybe it's the those people that appear arts and crafty, you know, those ones that watch murder crime mysteries, all those women that go out there and just says how to get away with murder and all that stuff. These people are taking notes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. So essentially, um, I watched it on Netflix. How did you watch it? So, yeah. Net Netflix. Yeah. Also Netflix. So it's still streaming on on Netflix as as we're making this episode. Um, and the fact that I've realized that a lot of people kind of bring this movie up time and time again, as this is a really quote unquote, a mind just, a, just blows your mind on the kind of level of storytelling this gives and the, the type of casting and the acting that goes on in this movie. It really, it really blows a lot of people's mind. And it's one of uh, David Fincher's better works right so for those that don't know David Fincher has done the social network um he's done what else fight club seven um zodiac so he's done a lot of like American psycho movies so and this is considered one of the better ones so for me I like fight club you know and and seven was interesting to say the least but uh, do you know that I haven't watched fight club you know what? Fight Club. And you want to know why you have probably haven't watched Fight Club? It's because people are not allowed to talk about Fight Club. And since you don't what? get it, you need to watch it to understand. So yeah, th probably. These are the rules. I'm not the one that make that makes them up. So, regardless, let's go back into Gone Girl. So, it was a two and a half hour movie, if I remember, and the way that it was set up, you know, I, I liked how um how what's the name ben affleck's character nick he was really set up as like a charming kind of guy and relatable and nice and and i was like he you know is what? charming that's the whole point like him and his chin <laughs> they, they even comment about his chin and maybe this is the start of why he they is him handsome him. and charming so, <laughs> the guy's got game you know so clearly you know more ways than one and very uh, handsome and the way that I, I i thought that the movie was kind of depicted it, it kind of shows the way that i thought something was, that was really cool is they also give timestamps as to five days before disappearing three days before disappearing day of disappearing four days after disappearing kind of thing and it kind of keeps helps you keep chronalizing what goes on because they do that for nick's for ben's character which is nick and then for amy's character which is uh rosamund so mm -hmm. i think I, I i think like it allows us to grow invested and also not lose a sense of time period because the amount of drama that goes on you know in this like three days or five days before the disappearing it's like wow this is deep so um what about you? What is it that you thought about the movie? As I told you, that's definitely one of my favorite movies because I'm so into mystery, drama, psychopath, because I really analyze people's personality. I mean, not in, not like the gonger. <laughs> <laughs> I am scared but... for the, your friends. This <laughs> is... <laughs> Silly is watching us. She's on to us. She thinks we're psycho. She she's taking notes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. But 
um, I think uh, because she she's a writer and she's also in the business of uh, self analysis. Mm. Kind of. So she's Perfect very. Ending. Yeah, yeah. She's very sensitive. So I think she's putting the relationship on the microscope. So she is analyzing every action that the husband does, like his his feeling towards her. So I, I guess I guess um she wants too much love from him, but that was a kind of love that you are putting pressure on someone. We don't want to spoil it, but you know at the end what happened. So she gets what she wants, and that was crazy. So basically, you make someone to be in the marriage by force. This is so scary. Insane. This is this so is I absolutely guess, correct. Yes. That's why. That's why I love the movie because I think the movie really touches the nerve. And you are like shocked, like seriously, she can just really get away with everything, and everybody loves her, and she still make him to stay in the marriage. <sighs> and you know, it was it was it was based on a book. Was it? Yes. Uh, yeah, it was a book that they made a movie out of it. Uh, by Gillian Flynn, right? Yeah. That's, yeah. I guess so. Yeah. So. I, I, what I really liked about what you said is, you know, it talks about what she was really driving a husband to be a husband, you know, and the way that, that she wants, the way that she wants, exactly the way that she wants it, not, you know, um, because I, I think this is something that I've heard from different relationship columns or things is that sometimes women like projects and projects of men and they shape the men to be who they want them to be kind of thing and but however no, this is not always the case yeah sometimes i do it as well yes you you are you're giving some amy vibes right now yes uh so some but however not all men are projects she are said i forged the man of my dream exactly but i made him smarter sharper I inspired him to rise to my level. I forged the man of my dreams. I love that script. <laughs> oh, that's so. It's it, it it goes to show, like you know, she she was the potter potter and he was the clay kind of thing. But something that was also hinted out throughout the movie was that this is not the first time she's actually framed her partner her lover whatever mm -hmm. for a crime or for a charge kind of thing that's turned out worse for the partner than it did for her and i i don't know i, I once you make that kind of discovery of that kind of character doesn't that should be red flags all around like for me if i was nick and i found out this is what my partner was consistently doing kind of thing he essentially wanted out of that relationship, but his hands were tied, not because he wanted to, but because of, spoiler alert, again, um, because she was pregnant. How she got pregnant, we don't know, but she... she we know, but you can spoil it. Yeah. <laughs> you know that. You know it. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was, it was... So this woman is crazy smart. Yeah. So I think... I, I, I think for for us that are kind of watch the external view that watch the movie it to me it it might be a little too surreal but however there are you know documentaries and document about murder mysteries and things like that and what people do to scorn when they're scorned lovers kind of thing so i'm glad that i've not knowingly met a woman like amy in my life but uh uh, if I was in Nick's situation now, I don't know. Uh, if I was truly in Nick's situation, I'll probably like change my name and run kind of thing. But however, 
for the sake of the baby, I'm not sure. Maybe I might do something more dramatic. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm not Amy. I don't have that kind of skill or that willpower to go through. And don't you think that there are probably like some men? Oh, they are like Amy. Abu- I there, guess there are. It's abusive. Yeah. So this is the thing. I want same thing. It. I call it emotional terrorism. So that actually exists. It maybe not to the full degree of Amy, but there are some people that will consistently use emotion, cry in front of a boyfriend or their partner to get what they want, mm-hmm. or they would um, consistently try to make the partner feel bad for doing X, Y, and Z. She took it to the extreme. So it does exist to certain degrees, but I don't want any of that bad shit crazy around me. So, um, and then Celia, so what was like your favorite scene? Mm. my favorite scene oh. when she when she kills nail had nail patrick oh that was that <laughs> that that one um interesting scene choice we because that's when it's the most there because <laughs> that's when the most glorious part happened And the fact that she drove home in this man's, covered in this man's blood. I was like, and you want to know something too is because Neil Patrick Harris, he, I think his character, um, his name was Desi. um, His character, he was, I think what, if they were in a relationship together, then it's, he was very controlling, right? So he was like, you stay here, the camera's here, don't go anywhere, kind of thing. No. Oh, yeah. He just wanted to make her feel safe because she was that scared. House, that but... house was already there beforehand, all right? And... I think he loved she, her. Well, he loved her, but uh, he, he died for the cause. <laughs> um, but because I, I realized, like... No, I still... I'm... You know what's funny? Because... Um, I used to watch Doogie Hauser that uh, nailed Patrick. He was like, as, as a young doctor, like when I was a teenager. So every uh-huh. time that I, I see him in the movie, it reminds me, it goes me back to old days on the Doogie Hauser. So he has always been like a good guy, you know? Like he, I mean, I don't know, but Doogie I've Hauser. never seen him as a bad you want to know yeah, something it, I, it's true it's so funny because neil patrick harris is a character in himself right so that doogie house came out in 1993 so one how old are you <laughs> you watched as a teenager oh my lord but anyways um uh, what my first instance of neil patrick harris was in how i met your mother right so ah, that's new yeah. You, well, exactly, Miss. Because old, probably old, Miss you old weren't. Old. Maybe you weren't watching the Doogie Howser. Yeah, I was. No, I was in university time, so it, it hit me at the right time. So, anyways, um, so it, it bewildered me when people like Neil Patrick Harris, who came out as as gay, uh, many years later, I was like, oh my god, this guy, this person that I used to idolize, you know, being Barney Stinson, which is like a womanizer. Uh, in is he comics. gay? He's yeah, he's gay. gay in real life. Yeah, he's yeah. so uh, he's married to David Brutnan. So, anyways, and they have like two kids together, something like that. But, anyways, oh, nice. so anytime I see him, him, so and yeah, I know something. Uh, <laughs> it, it, well, yes, what I find very interesting is like when people like that, gay character or gay people act straight in, in movies, I'm like, oh my god, I can't. Like, how do you do it? You know, his acting was so good. I was like, 
I actually thought this guy loved women, and this guy actually died for women in this movie. I was like, ah, uh, no wonder he's gay. Listen, I can be a lesbian in a in a movie. It's oh, right? totally fine with me. I'm sure some people that are watching this right now, they're already going to typecast you right into a private movie. You know, okay, so this is so funny. Now, now let me tell you something. You know, this is something that I really like to act. I really like to be cast in the movie that they are like a prison and they're all women. And all the shit that happened, I want to be one of those prisoners in the movie. Orange is the new the black. Crazy man. and psychopath women. Everything we I've... fight with. Oh my goodness. Okay. All right. So, uh, the people that made Orange is <laughs> New Black, if, when they do a revamp of the show, they call it Orange. Black is New Orange. <laughs> then, <laughs> they'll and call something you up else. Time. Something else. If you see on my Instagram, I did the monologue of the Ganger. Oh, have you? Okay, so maybe you might want to send us. We'll put the link in the description for that post, and we can all watch okay. it together. Uh, okay. What was what was the scene that you did? Uh, like the one that she's she's talking from, like the beginning. What happened? That. Um, I don't remember. I don't. I mean, I memorized it before, but I don't really remember it now. But the one that she dyeing her hair and she's she's talking to herself. Mm. That that part. Okay, you know, I got it. Yeah, it's it's basically in her mind. Mm -hmm. But that's that's a monologue that she says. Amy and I uh, were fine. Uh, then 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 I made him smarter. Mm. I forged a man of my dream. There it is. That's true. This is smarter because of me. This is true. And then, oh, and then he wanted a cool girl. Cool girl are fine. Cool girl are this. Oh, yeah. I remember that line. The line that, that you... So how, that's you my favorite it. line. Yes, I remember that line very well. I was like, ah, I get it now why he's married to her. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I, you know Eat what I'm saying? Pizza and stay at size one. But, she's right like this monologue is absolutely right men so, wants everything want this from at, one of man. course of course you know so. eat but be skinny exactly. uh, be cool but be lady yes. uh, uh, they're like everything is just doesn't make any sense we want everything and we'll do and we'll do nothing for it, you know? So we're quite lazy. We expect everything to be done for us. But then again, if everyone had a choice, we're all selfish to some extent. So if even women too, they want to be treated well, right? And if they could just let themselves do whatever and be treated well, of course they would, right? So you got to give something to get something sometimes. But this is besides the point. I, I do recall that... The whole one of the reasons we decided to do Gone Girl this week was because it ties very closely to Johnny Depp Amber and Amber Heard. Heard. So, since you're the you're you keep your ear to the ground, tell us what are the connections that you see? Because I'm all I ever hear on the internet, or at least from whispers, is that Amber Heard is. For the longest time, Johnny Depp was the bad guy. But now that they're in trials, um, a lot of news is coming out about Amber Heard and she was more aggressive than he was. So is that, do you think she took notes from, from Amy and says, you know what, two can play this game. Let me, let me see if I can play Johnny Depp too. I don't really follow their trial and their story i just i mean I, I just know that she's accusing or i don't know if it's true or not but i think she's accusing of johnny depp of beating her up mm. or, or maybe she wants to like destroy his career or get money i don't know what she's up to but i mean i i see her to be amy maybe not to that level I hope not. But Poor I, I, so. but I, I see her. Listen, let me tell you something. Bad women 
are way dangerous than bad men. This is, this is something that I'm telling you. Me, myself, as a woman, I'm so scared of women than men. I'm just maybe some some women watching this this video and they're gonna hate me. It's okay, let them hate me. But I do really think men are way simple creature. You know, like I mean, when you really compare it to women, like dangerous women and dangerous men, I would I would I don't know why, but I have a feeling that. Um, Men can, um, I think women, they can, if they're really bad, they can wear a facade of being very nice, mm. very good. And you mm. never know what's going on behind it. But men can, can really pretend that you know that they're but bad. You, you, you that's, say that, this. That's, you say this, but however, at the same time, you must understand that, um, you, you must understand that the judicial system, the justice system, sorry, is, is always going to favor, well, it's not always, has favored women when it comes to marital discourse or, you know, some sort of domestic violence and things like that. But you're right. I think there is a statistic that um, out, of, out of 10 cases of domestic violence, like two of them are actually from the woman to the guy. and you know, it's, and th those cases, like, the guy has taken a lot before he felt like he could, he can even bring it forward, right? Whereas mm -hmm. with some women, it could all, sometimes it can be, just take as little as a stern look or something like that. And the guy would then look like the bigger aggressor, you know, but that's, that's not to, to be said that, you know, there's different, different degrees of severity of how people are treated and how people can handle it. And I, I don't know. I, I think for, for me, women, women can be beautiful and disastrous <laughs> yeah, at the same time, you know, and um, I, I, I just that. told you bad women, dangerous women are more dangerous than dangerous men. That's, that's, that's all I said. I've not yet seen like a serial killer woman yet or like other, you know, um, but, but maybe, you know, they're just really good at getting away with it. So who knows? But I, I guess that's really about it. But in summary, based on this movie by David Fincher, how would you rate it on a 10? I Nine. A solid nine. Wow. For me, I would rate it. You know what? It's an okay movie. As in like, it's not my class of movie just because I, I like sleep at night. Like I've said before. <laughs> and I have to worry about the person that sleeps in the bed next to me. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> like the line that they said to start at the end, you know, is what's it you, what are you thinking? What's it you're, you're making me do? Or was it can I just crack open your skull and give me your thoughts? I'm like, oh god, very graphic. <laughs> so, long story short, I would give it like a for a film. It was, you know, it was good. It was good. So I'm I'm gonna give it a seven, at least a seven. Ah, uh, yeah. So only I, seven. Yeah. See, the thing is, <laughs> only seven because I'm not rushing to go watch it again right away. Like. Truth be told, I could probably see myself watching it again in a few years. You know, just be like, okay, let me see if I could have caught up in these clues that were brought up throughout the movie. But it, it's not like, oh my God, like I need to watch every single video about it. You know, that tells me the insides, the outsides, the themes and things like that. But anyways, on an average of our scores, that's an eight, right? Eight out of 10. So IMBD, Guess what they gave it? 8.1 and Rotten Tomatoes 87%. So nice. It's pretty good. So it's doing very well. And it made on a budget of 61 million, they made on box office $370 million. So they did very well for themselves in there. 
still making still making some money off of you know distributions and things like that. So, anyways, so that's it. But that so, wasn't, but that wasn't really realistic at the end. No? The, I mean, I mean, I, it was, but I mean, how come someone can plan everything? There, that there is are well savant, to- there are savants up there that we. I bet you there are people that are very type A and very organized, and you know, so it would not surprise me that uh, someone has their entire week planned. You know to sometimes to the very minute so if you can do that you could probably do that for a murder scene i don't know so but yeah so uh i guess that's it for this episode of salt of popcorn so thank you guys for listening so so yeah, what subscribe do you want to subscribe <laughs> our <laughs> channel you've heard it from <laughs> barcelona's finest let me let's go all right, so subscribe to our channel, uh, connect with us on Instagram uh, as you feel fit, and stay tuned for another episode next week. And it is yes. my turn to pick, so I'm going to pick something, Let's see. something cheery and happy and something that doesn't have psycho killers. I don't know. I don't know who I partnered happy with. Happy ending. Yes, Everything's exactly. good. No one dies in my movies. <laughs> Everyone just goes away. We all say. We all say. Yeah. If you don't choose gangster movies. Yeah, exactly. We shall see. Anyways, that's (laughs) it for this episode. See you guys next week. Okay. Bye.